Hey guys, how are you today? Welcome to Your Space TV. Today I'm a little bit north of Titusville at Space View Park. It's dedicated to astronauts, the people that worked on the space program, and unfortunately some people that passed away working on the space program. The end of January has always been a somber month for NASA. On January 28th, 1986, the Challenger disaster happened. But did you know that on the 27th of January, Apollo 1 disaster happened? And then in 2003, in February 1st, Columbia broke up in our atmosphere, and that was a tragedy as well. All in a span of one week, three tragedies are mourned for NASA and spaceflight. And I'm here to talk to you about some of those missions. Let's go back to January 27th, 1967. The first Apollo mission. The dream of Apollo was just getting started. All the drawings have been done. All the engineers and scientists were working on trying to make it as safe as possible. But with a deadline that John F. Kennedy gave us, that deadline was drawing near. We had to get to the mood by the end of the century. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. The crew of Apollo 1 consists of two veteran space astronauts, Gus Grissom and Ed White. Gus Grissom flew on the Mercury, one-person capsule. He also flew on Gemini, two-person capsule. And he was going to be the first to fly on Apollo, three-person capsule. Apollo was going to be the one going to the moon. The capsule had to be tested. Ed White was the first astronaut on Gemini to go out of his space capsule to do a spacewalk, which involves opening the hatch and actually going outside tethered to his spacecraft. Roger Chaffee was a rookie, only 31 years old, but really wanted to show these guys that he could be a professional astronaut. They were scheduled to launch in February. Before launch date, a couple of weeks before, they did what they call a plugs out test. This consists about going into their capsule and getting them ready for flight. The capsule was going to be pressurized and it was with 100% pure oxygen. The Apollo 1 astronauts really weren't satisfied with the capsule of Apollo 1. Built by North Grumman, they kept on complaining about it not being exactly safe. A lot of flammable materials were on board. They were constantly having short circuit problems, issues with the computer, and so forth. But as astronauts, this was a mission that they had to accomplish. So in mid-afternoon, January 27th, 1967, they boarded their capsule. NASA had developed explosive bolts for Mercury, but when Gus Grissom splashed down into the Atlantic Ocean, there was a misfire of the capsule hatch, and it blew off. They took out the explosive bolts from the hatch on Apollo. They didn't want the hatch to malfunction again, like it did in Mercury. So as they boarded their capsule with 100% pure oxygen, they were so frustrated with Apollo 1. Even during the test, they could barely communicate in between buildings. Gus Grissom here would have been the first one to see the spark behind the panel. It was his job to get the crew out as commander. It consists of putting down Roger Chaffee's headrest that was sitting in the middle. That way he could open the hatch. But at 100% pure oxygen, one spark is practically a bomb. He just barely got the chance to reach his hands up to touch the hatch before that spark turned into an inferno. It was the voice of Roger Chaffee that screamed on the radio, we have a fire, we have a fire in the spacecraft. And then all of a sudden, radio silence. Everybody in mission control were dumbfounded.
They sent the rescue team, which were already on standby, just below the rocket. The pressure got so hot inside the capsule that it blew the hatch completely, with flames shooting up to 10 feet high. Some of the rescue teams that were trying to open the hatch actually got hurt and burned. And sadly, minutes later, we found out that the astronauts, all three, had passed away. The tragedy of losing three heroes of the space program and the beginning phases of us going to the moon, people were questioning, is this even worth it? Congress had come down on NASA under safety violations and North Grumman was really in trouble and had a lot of answers. After the investigation was done, the results were we were going too fast. We were speeding up the process of going to the moon and ignoring some safety precautions. From that day forth, NASA has always said, safety will always come first. And then, just 21 years later, on January 28th, 1986, the Challenger disaster happened. Back in the 70s when the space shuttle was developed and first launched in 1981, the Challenger and the Challenger crew, one of them which was a school teacher, Christy McAuliffe, all eyes was specifically on this launch, especially for kids all around the world, especially for me. I remember when my teacher pulled over and said, it's almost time for launch. I was so excited. I've been drawing this space shuttle for a couple of weeks now, and now was my chance to actually see my first shuttle launch in person. I remember getting out of the car and it was freezing outside. In the upper 30s, probably 40s, our teacher yelled at us, look east, look east. When we all looked east, I saw a beady dot of a rocket with a four inch flame coming out of it. It was starting to turn. It looked amazing. I was clapping, I was all full of joy. My heart wanted to come out of my chest. I was thinking to myself, I might like this space flight stuff. And then all of a sudden, disaster. I remember looking at my teacher with her hands in front of her mouth, wondering, is this what it's supposed to look like? I remember other kids gasping. Some kids didn't even know. They were still clapping. Was the booster separation supposed to look like that? Once I realized that the teacher was trying to get us back into the car to head back to school, I realized something was wrong. My dad let me borrow his camera for that day, just in case I could take a picture from our school. He didn't know that we were actually gonna do a small field trip. And at that time, I took this picture. That is what I saw after the cloud cover had settled. You can tell it's a real picture because that's the size as the pictures used to be when they developed. <laughs> and it's actually got the, the ink behind it. But uh, yeah, that was a picture I took. Tragic. I remember going back to school, the teacher put on the TV, and we realized that all seven astronauts had passed away. I was Vice President of the United States way back then. I went down there when, when Challenger blew up. It was a terrible tragedy, of course. So Reagan asked me to go down to comfort the families. It was a very moving thing for me uh, to see these families in grief. I think the thing that really moved me was President Reagan's uh, comments after that. We will never forget them nor the last time we saw them this morning as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. After that moment, I was never the same again.
I followed the investigation in second grade, asking all sorts of questions to my parents, teachers, anytime I went to Kennedy Space Center. I wanted to know every detail about this tragedy. And after that, I love space. Why didn't I become an astronaut, you might say? Well, I hated reading, I hated math, I didn't like science too, too much. Well, there you have it. So as a lot of you may know, the booster, the side rocket boosters of the Space Shuttle Challenger had failed. One of the O-rings that keep the rocket boosters together had failed in the cold weather. They were made to expand and contract, but not under freezing conditions. So as the shuttle was launching, a small gap opened in the O-ring, shooting flames into the orange external fuel tank. Being that the space shuttle is mostly built out of tiles, there was no surviving an explosion that massive. Again, Congress was asking questions. We were spending so much money on the space shuttle program. Was it worth it? Now we have lost seven astronauts. And ever since then, the shuttle program started to go into decline. The program had already outlived its date. NASA was praying that we weren't going to have another tragedy. Then, on February 1st, 2003, just 35 years later, Columbia happened. Columbia, the first space shuttle ever launched in 1981. February 1st, 2003, Columbia was scheduled to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. The whole mission was flawless. The launch was beautiful. Columbia had done so much for us. The space station was mostly built by Columbia as well. The mileage was just historic when it came to the shuttle program. Unfortunately, at liftoff of Columbia, a piece of foam from the external tank had punctured the wing, and that puncture created a large hole and the heat shields fell off. Probably a day or not more than two days after we launched and I had seen some video. At the time, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if it was foam. I didn't know if it had impacted the wing. I knew that the engineering teams were off looking at it to determine whether it was something that we needed to be or should be concerned about. Unlike Star Trek, or unlike a science fiction series, there is not aboard the shuttle some all-powerful computer that's analyzing thousands of inputs and telling the crew there's a problem. The shuttle is based in the technology of the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, the primitive computers that are on board compared to your laptop aren't hooked up to sensors, and even if they were, they're not capable of doing a lot of real-time analysis. But uh, the thermal analysis does not indicate that there is a potential for a burn-through. No burn-through means no catastrophic damage, and localized heating damage would mean a towel replacement? Well, it, it would mean possible impact to turn around repairs and that sort of thing, but we don't see uh, any kind of uh, safety of flight issue here. I really don't think there's much we can do. So it's not really a factor with this flight because there's nothing we can do about it. Okay. On February 1st, they were ready to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and everything was going perfectly. It was broadcasted live on CNN. I remember I was living in Tampa at the time and I was gonna come down to Kennedy Space Center to actually see the landing. Back then, if you had good binoculars, you could see the shuttle up in the sky before the sonic boom. I've seen so many landings, I definitely wanted to see this one. Unfortunately, the night before, I had a kidney stone and I was rushed to the ER. The first thing I told the lady at the ER is please give me a room with the TV. I need to see Columbia land. I wanted to see what I missed because this guy had a problem. As I turned on the TV live, there it was. The shuttle was coming in, they lost communication with the space shuttle because it's re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Mechanical systems officer called me and said that uh, we were seeing indications of some uh, temperature um, sensors that were um, off nominal and they were sensors that were in the back of the 
of the uh, wing um, near the control surfaces. They had to wait around three minutes to get communication back, and that was a communication that never came. But there was no bus, no, no cable, no MDM, no single thing that was common to all of those measurements, um, except the fact that they were all in the left wing. That, that was the commonality, as it turns out. Copy. We began to look around the room and ask the other team members, hey, how's it look? Everything's going fine. And the reason everything else was working fine is because the orbiter was continuing to fly fine. All of the rest of the systems were continuing to function normally. If there's something we want the crew to do or need the crew to do, we give them the direction to do that. In this case, we didn't have anything figured out by the time we lost comm with the crew. If you have the mission control video, where, where that thought was going through my mind. Final one, you expecting tracking? One minute to go, flight. Columbia, Houston, UHF, com check. orbiter may have started flipping around, it may have started tumbling, we're not really sure, but it was not instantaneous. There was a period of time in there when the crew probably knew that the end was near. I knew right then and there that I had just witnessed another tragedy in spaceflight. I'll never forget that day, just like I'll never forget Challenger. GC flight. Why GC? Lock the doors. Copy. I, I just wanted to make sure that, that number one, folks understood that Again, um, stay focused on the task here. Let's um, stay within ourselves and stay within the system and, and keep doing what we know and understand how to do until we know more. And, uh, and that's when I asked him to lock the doors. I mean, the shuttle state. program management was unsafe. They couldn't manage anything safely. I mean, they couldn't manage a bus line safely, much less a shuttle, because of the way they were organized. There are some people who did the wrong things. They conducted serious discussions in the hallway. They didn't request detailed information. They made decisions based on flawed thinking. It didn't hurt me yesterday, it won't hurt me today. And those individuals now are no longer part of the program. The ground team broke its covenant with the astronauts. That, that covenant is that when we put you up in space and while you're up in space, we will do everything we possibly can to ensure your safe return. And that they did not do everything that they could to ensure the safe return of the Columbia. The difference would have been that we on the ground and the crew on board would have known um, and that, that, of course, would have, would have been uh, maybe even unbearable. What are the odds that in a span of one week, all major tragedies of NASA happened within that time frame? So ever since Columbia, we pretty much ended the space program, the space shuttle. So in 2011, our shuttle program came to an end. 
We were now going to go to Russia and use the Soyuz capsule. Developers were already trying to develop other rockets. We still had the space station, but that was all we had until a small commercial company called SpaceX developed a rocket that could be reused. And reusable rockets were now the future of spaceflight. Still to this day, we have not launched a government built capsule. Boeing isn't going anywhere at the moment, but we have the Artemis program and Artemis is being made to get us back to the moon just like Apollo did. If any of you actually get the chance to come to Titusville, to Coco, to actually see a launch, you need to visit this park. Space View Park has all these memorials and plaques of different astronauts, even workers that worked in the vehicle assembly building. Remember, the people that got us into space isn't just in Florida. They're everywhere around the world, and their names have been mortalized in this place. It's a perfect place to take a stroll and think about humanity. Our human species of hard work and dedication to accomplish things that were said were impossible back in the 50s and 60s. Each and every name in this park is a hero, not just to America, but to the entire world. The future of space exploration is thriving again now. So during this week, think about the astronauts that passed away. They lost their lives to achieving a goal of having a space station in space, going to the moon, and trying to break barriers for the final frontier. There's a lot of monuments here, and a lot of plaques are empty. People still could lose their lives doing this job. Just because we've gone to space before does not make it routine. It is everything but routine and dangerous. Much respect to the people that give their lives to sit in the rocket and reach the vastness of space. Thank you for watching Your Space TV. I'll catch you on the next video. Good day. Thank you.